Hello, everybody, and welcome in to Blue Jays Today, folks. A very special episode that we've been looking forward for a long time. Projecting the opening day Toronto Blue Jays roster. Baseball is freaking bat, baby, and I could not be more excited. I'm your host, Nicholas Playalog. Yeah, I'm your host, Adam Peddle. Uh, man, 10 days. Someone said in the chat, mm-hmm. Sophie. Shout out mm-hmm. to Sophie mm-hmm. uh, Shipton. Uh, yeah, man. I was on the train coming back to Toronto thinking about how, wow, less than two weeks and we get to sit on the couch right over there, go live with y'all, talk some baseball and watch some baseball and have those stats that we've been seeing all spring training, those exciting, sexy hitting stats actually mean something. And on that note, man, I am just so thrilled about how this offense has done the spring training. Yeah, we could talk about spring training, blah, blah, blah. It's, It's just spring training stats. But when you have an entire roster of guys hitting over 300, driving in runs, hitting a lot of home runs. We're fourth in OPS to start the spring training and sixth in home runs. That tells you that there's something going on here that's good yeah. with this Blue Jays offense. Yeah, exactly, right? I mean, so all we can really say is that right now, this team looks good. That's it, right? You know, take from that what you will. Because I was looking at the stats and I saw like, hey, Toronto Blue Jays, currently the best hitting team in the American League, but then the third best hitting team was the Oakland Athletics. So obviously <laughs> it's like, you, you can't take away everything from this and say, yeah. oh, well, this is what's going to happen in the season. But we do know for sure that right now, there is a lot of guys swinging the bat really, really well. And this is just, I think, a little bit indicative as to potentially how they might start the season in April, right? Yeah, I, well, for me, like, obviously the results and the stat line is awesome and it's encouraging. Mm-hmm. But like you said, yeah, the Oakland results are really encouraging mm-hmm. for them. Maybe it is. Who knows? And I still think that they're at. So. Exactly. But what I'm seeing is the players and their at-bats. Like, I got to always shout this guy out. He continues to impress. I'm going to continue shouting him out until he stops impressing. It's Dalton Varsho. Right. And I'll shout out another guy. It's, it's, it's Alejandro Kirk. Dude. They're both going back. I don't want to say Dalton Varsha's going back to anything because he wasn't anything yet with the Jays, mm-hmm. but maybe he's getting a little back to what he was in Arizona or maybe changing something to adjust to this new league, mm-hmm. right? Whereas Kirk, we know he's going back to Kirk ways, and I'm very excited about that. And maybe even George Springer too, bro. Well, and Just, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? and, I mean, speaking of Alejandro Kirk, you guys know that I am a massive Alejandro Kirk stan. And seeing him do what he's doing right now, and again, I know, spring training sets, they don't mean nothing, but seeing his approach at the dish and, and how he's turning on the ball and how he's hitting effectively everything right now, that is just so key, especially with what's happening with Danny Jansen right now. I mean, he breaks a little tiny bone in his, in his hand. Oh, and my his God. Wrist. That just sucks. But it's great from a Toronto Blue Jays standpoint that it's like, okay, you know what? He can go chill. I'm not that worried because Alejandro Kirk right here is tearing the top off the baseball, you know? Yeah. It, yeah. I really, honestly, this this lineup is starting to build up my hopes. And I, I yes. do, I do got to be chill, you know, because, uh, I mean, the guys that they're hitting off, yes, some of them are minor leaguers, but we have seen them hit off Cole. Yes, he's injured, maybe dealing with something. We've seen him hit off Corbin Burns, yep. who is now part of the Baltimore Orioles staff, which we're going to be facing this year in 2024. So it's not like they're hitting off nobodies. They're hitting off of everybody. And that, that's what I like to see. Completely agree, dude. Well, let's move over to that lineup, to that roster as a whole, everybody. Mm-hmm. We got a great graphic here, if you're watching this on YouTube, folks, uh, that we're going to be doing to just predict uh, and project the entire roster for these Toronto mm-hmm. Blue Jays. We'll be revealing it as it goes on. Uh, if you're listening to this, you know, on an audio format or an mm-hmm. audio platform, we will describe it as best as we can. So mm-hmm. let's lead things off in the lineup, and let's lead things off uh, with the leadoff hitter for these Toronto Blue Jays. Yeah, I got to look at George Springer. He right there, number one in the Toronto Blue Jays lineup. I think no shocker here. Uh, but a real quick shout out. You got to you gotta acknowledge that George Springer, he has, he's had a lot of chips on his shoulder coming into the season. This last year was probably one of his worst seasons he may have ever had, mm-hmm. right, in his career. And now he's aging, so it's a lot of pressure. Like, what can you do? What can you give us at the top of the lineup? And slow start to the spring, but he actually, recently in this past week, started heating it up quite a lot, bro. Yes, he did, man. He had an incredible week this past week, folks. We're going to get into all of those statistics for George Springer. But first, uh, we got to crown the Jay of the week. Yeah, that's right, guys. It is that time for the J of the Week, brought to you by Tim Horton's Roll Up to Win. And the winner this week was George Springer. Let's go, George, man. Big shout out to you. Where are you, buddy? There you are. There's our boy. Yeah, I mean, George Springer was just quite phenomenal, honestly, this this week. Let's flash over to the stats. 
uh, where you've got. Give me two seconds, guys. I got so many things open right here. Well, you had two home runs. We had two home runs this week. Two home runs this week. Had multiple RBIs. Had an OPS well over one point five. One point five. I mean, that's stupid, right? Obviously, the guy only had thirteen at bats, so like he wasn't yeah. playing a whole lot. But still, like what he did with those thirteen at bats, he was getting on base uh, more than half of the time. Yeah. He was all over the place, dude. This is what you want to see from your veteran guy who gets paid twenty-five million dollars to be on this team and to lead off for the. Toronto Blue Jays in 2024. Yeah, and like I said to introduce like George Springer, man, we've been really kind of hoping that we get a little bit of a bounce back because, look, Jays have dudes. Like, you, you see George Springer's name from someone who's not a Jays fan, you go, man, like, this this top three of the lineup can be very lethal. Mm -hmm. and, and seeing him just show a little bit of what he's capable of, I need to see some power coming back from into George Springer's bat. We didn't see that a lot last year, especially in the baseball savant pages. Mm -hmm. The, we were down to the 30th, 20th percentile in barrel percentage, hard hit percentage. I need to see just that. You don't need to give me George Springer 27, uh, 2017 ALCS MVP. Give me, give me 35, 34-year-old George Springer who's hitting nukes. Who's, who's putting on the thick body and hitting nukes, dude? Well, that's that's what we were missing, right? It was all about the slugging last year. Pretty much all the other stats were where they need to be for Springer, but the slugging was roughly 100 points lower than what he typically does. That needs to change. So far this spring, he is absolutely doing that. So I'm very excited as to what he could potentially offer at the leadoff position. Shout out once again to George Springer and also to Tim Horton's roll up to win, everybody. I see a comment in there saying, how do you guys not have roll up to win cups? And I don't know how Whoa. you don't have it. I do. Yeah. So that's very strange. <laughs> but I, I assure you guys, Adam did get the roll up to win. Sadly, we mm. didn't win anything this No. Time. I bought the coffees. But you can <laughs> win a bunch of stuff, guys. We're talking cars. We're talking cash prizes. We're talking vacations. Mm -hmm. Tons of stuff, guys. This promotion is going on until March 31st. Yes. So go get yourself a coffee. Become a winner. I'm like 50 roll-ups away from my 60th roll-up, which will be a special one, wow. apparently. Oh, okay. <laughs> i got to start drinking more coffee. Wait, th 60 roll-ups? Yeah, if you get 60 roll-ups, you get a special prize. And you're close to that, eh? I'm, a, I'm 50 away. My <laughs> goodness gracious. Okay. Okay, guys. Yeah, just keep rolling it up. Keep bro. rolling, guys. Shout out to Tim Hortons once again. Let's move on back to that roster, guys. Obviously, George Springer is a lock. This next guy is a lock. Bo Bichette. Going to be batting primarily mm -hmm. second. We're assuming in the lineup. Uh, uh, I mean, yeah. there's not a whole lot to say about this guy other than the fact that he is also having an incredible spring so far. I tweeted this out today, which kind of blew me away a little bit. I mean, we always know that Boba Shed gets himself on base a ton. He's a free swinger. He's hitting everything. He's hitting for he's hitting the ball pretty pretty freaking hard right now, guys. He's only got one homer, but so far he is tied for the league lead with the most hard hit baseballs Huge. in spring training. That is a big statistic because you know you can say, oh, it's spring training stats. This doesn't matter. The guy's hitting 450. I completely agree. But what he's doing with the baseball, I mean, that that's. That's what he's doing with the baseball, right? I, I feel like this is something that could potentially carry over into the regular season. Yeah, we, we kind of all forgot about Bo Bichette because it's one of those guys where you set it and you forget it. You know, we had, we were so focused on the guys who weren't doing anything uh, this offseason. You know, you look, or this uh, past season, you look at Dalton Farshaw with the bat. You're like, where is this guy? Uh, Kirk fall, fell off the face of, uh, face of the earth. Where is this guy? Mm. But, and, and Vladimir Guerrero Jr., we need more from this guy. But Bo Bichette has steadily been one of the best players in baseball, best hitters in baseball, mind you. Mm -hmm. And I think we all kind of just assume, okay, well, he's going to give us this season and let's forget about it. But we had never really talked about this scenario where what if he goes even to the next level, not to use an old hashtag, right, right. but he goes up to the next level. What if he reaches in that upper 900 OPS or or gets a higher batting average? What if he gets 330, 340? Now you start to see the oh, the on-base percentage go up. The uh, the slugging goes up. Maybe he's hitting up for a little bit more power. Mm -hmm. The OPS will obviously go up. And he goes to this other level that he becomes a superstar in his own right. Well, I, I just think that him hitting the ball really hard, this is just one of those things that is, again, a good sign. And I know it's a very small sample size, but he's up there in the MLB with all the guys who you look at as being like just hard hit phenoms. You know, like those mm -hmm. dudes over there in Pittsburgh, uh, O'Neill Cruz. Cruz. He's up there smashing. as well, right there. He's smashing the baseball. That's never been Bo Bichette's MO, right? But maybe it could be this year. If he can marry that 300 batting average that he seems to give year in and year out, but then also is lining baseballs. I don't want to go out of here and say that this guy's going to, you know, give you 30, 35 home runs, but I could fully see him in the conversation for league lead in doubles. 
because that feels like a type of thing that he could be very good at for if sure. he's absolutely annihilating this thing. Hey, I, I could pencil him in for a 25-25 season. I want him to run more. I Me think they, they've had those conversations already in camp that they want him to run more, and I believe he's already starting to have a few more stolen bases this spring training. 25-25, yeah. that's your player type, bro. I mean, you look over at Bobby Witt, I'm not comparing him to Bobby Witt. Bobby Witt is a different animal when it comes mm -hmm. to the speed. But you give me a Bobby Witt type where you can, you know, Go out there and you can get it. You can get on base. You can hit at a high clip over 300, mm -hmm. and you can give you some stolen bases. I'm not expecting you to hit 30, 40 stolen bases, but pa pair the power, pair the on base with the stolen base. I think you're going to increase that war as you're in your baseball reference quite a lot, bro. Yeah, yeah, dude. I'm getting a little bit more hyped just the more we talk. <laughs> yes. about. I haven't had a single bad thing to say yet, guys. No. Springer's incredible. Bubba Shet's yeah. incredible. This next guy's been pretty incredible too, everybody. We got. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we're not going to spend too long talking about this yeah. one because, I mean, you, you guys know it already. He came into camp looking phenomenal. He is performing just as well as these other guys are right now. It feels like all of the Toronto Blue Jays starters are just doing really well at the dish. Yeah. Guerrero, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Once you know, We've said it time and time and time again. Mm -hmm. When he goes, the Toronto Blue Jays go. He's hitting 444 right now. Yeah. Just do that regular season. Yeah, I mean, guys, do, are we not looking at the guys who's getting all the at-bats and seeing these high averages? Vl yeah. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is just being the best of them mm -hmm. right now. And, yeah, I know it's small sample size, but this is why I'm kind of anticipating the start of the regular season. Like, let's go. Dude, mm -hmm. I, uh, so I posted a video yesterday, and the, the whole point of it was talking, was looking at all of this and saying, guys, I know spring training stats, they don't mean anything. I mm -hmm. know that, mm -hmm. but let's also look at the the, the whole thing that the, the whole the picture, picture right the big now. picture, boys and girls. Everybody who is a Toronto Blue Jays starter who is going to be on the opening day roster, which we're going through right now, and who is probably going to be on the opening day lineup, they're all doing really, really well. And then I took it and I looked back at 2023 to mm -hmm. see who mm -hmm. is really popping off in spring training, and, and in spring training with the guys who had a, a over 850 OPS. You were looking at Bo, you were mm -hmm. looking at Vlad, mm -hmm. you were looking at Kevin Kiermeyer, you were looking at Whit Merrifield. Those were the four guys who had but, over 850 with more than 20 at-bats. Those and, guys did stuff in, in the regular season. And those guys all had a better first half mm -hmm. than they had second half. Right. right? They right. started off, they were really hot in April. So again, we're not saying that this is going to be you know, the whole season or anything, but with everybody doing what they're doing... I'm thinking that a hot April, we, we could be in store for, for a pretty good month. And I, I think we're going to need it. You know, funny enough, I think the word around Blue Jays camp, I don't say I think, I know I'm just hearing from other podcasts, other uh, analysts and Blue Jays beat writers. The word around the camp is, we're actually more worried right now about the pitching staff, and we'll get to that eventually, yeah. than the lineup. The, they actually feel very confident that this lineup is going to bang, especially right out of the gate. So... Yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. Why don't we keep going here and Dude, reveal the rest of that lineup? Just think bro. about all that that off season talk that right? we had. You know, it's like all of this for what? Now we're now right. we're a week away, and it's like, oh Jesus, the pitching's messed up, and the, the offense is incredible, Dude. right? Everything changes so fast in this goddamn game. It's it's I love it. Especially like, look, we're we're talking about this roster right now. This roster will not look like this in July, in no, of course in, not. in August. It no. won't. So you know. Look, it's going to change, but it's good to know where we're currently at in terms of a roster right now. So let's keep going, guys. Number four, you know him. He's a new Blue Jay. It's Justin Turner. Mm -hmm. Not much to say here, guys. He's going to be penciled in that four spot. Almost, um, I'd give him like 150 games. He's going to try and be there for the Toronto Blue Jays and driving runs. Yeah, 100%, dude. This is just one of those guys who isn't going anywhere. You yeah. Know? Like, again, you say the roster could be different in July. Absolutely, it could. He's still going to be here. Yeah, unless, I mean, unless, unless he's injured. Unless yeah. he's injured or unless we were so god awful terrible. But again, I, I'm just hope, assuming and hoping that neither yeah. of those things happen. No. So, Justin Turner, number four hitter. All right, number five. This guy, and this is where the lineup was up for debate throughout spring training, but I think we're starting to find some roles here. Number five, it's our guy Dalton Varsho. I mentioned right off the top of the show, I've, I've made videos on him, I've talked about him a bunch. Um, change in mentality, change in his physical stance at the plate. Uh, he's getting the results, which is great. You love to see it. And uh, he's gaining a lot more confidence this spring that he can drive in runs. And he even talked about how when he sees runners in scoring position, he needs to remind himself, it's just like any other approach. I'm doing the exact same thing, and you're getting the results, and he's getting a lot of RBIs because of it. Dalton Varsho is... When, you know, and I think when they traded from this is what they were hoping. But Dalton Varsho is supposed to be the future of this Toronto Blue Jays outfield. Yeah. Right? It's like you're looking at the outfield and you got George Springer and you got Kevin Kiermeyer. They're up there in age. And they're not going to necessarily be around forever, right? Dalton Varsho, when they traded for him, they give all that capital away. 
you know, the hope was, I'm assuming from Ross Atkins standpoint is this is going to be the future of that outfield for us. And I, ideally, if he pops up, we're going to lock him down for a longer term deal. Dalton Varsho, I want him to not only take the step with the bat, like we all know that he's capable of, but yeah, start to become that guy that's comfortable with the Toronto Blue Jays that almost starts to have a bit, bit of a presence there in that locker room. I feel like that's something that we could see this year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the door could definitely be open for a reunion with Dalton Varsho later. I think right now we're really happy and excited if we can get anything from that bat. I think that's going to be it kind of like the key player in this lineup to take it from just a, a good lineup, maybe a little bit above average lineup, if those four guys pop off in the top, to mm -hmm. a great lineup if you see Dalton Varsho giving you effort every single day. That's the thing, man. And we were missing consistently all of last year a solid guy in the middle mm -hmm. of the line. It was, it was supposed to be Matt Chapman. It was also supposed to be Dalton Varsho. It was supposed to be Kirk, too. It was supposed and to be Kirk. We didn't, didn't, we didn't, didn't get, get it, it from anyone. We didn't get you it. Know? So it's like, guy, you're the dude. Let's yeah. see what you got. He's doing well so far. Number six. On the opening day roster, we got Alejandro mm -hmm. Kirk. Uh, we've already kind of went over him. Uh, we're loving what we're seeing mm. from Kirky. Um, I'm thinking this is going to be a big bounce back year, dude. I think that the, just a few things went wrong last year. He didn't start with the team necessarily on time. He didn't get his spring training in. He was getting hurt a little bit here there. Now, yeah. He's starting. He's here in spring training. Danny Jansen is also injured, and that's a terrible thing for Danny Jansen, terrible thing for the Toronto Blue Jays. Kind of a good thing for Alejandro Kirk because it means regular playing time to start off the year. Get yourself in your rhythm. Get yourself in your groove. I expect big things. I, I agree. I actually heard on, on a podcast today someone talking about, well, you, with Alejandro Kirk specifically, um, you know, you can't afford to have another bad year in a row because if Kirk has another bad year in a row, we change the way we look at Alejandro Kirk. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and we if we really believe in the talent, I know that we do here on Blue Jays today, he's going to bounce back and have a better year. And we're already seeing out of the gate, love Kirk. And I like that he's getting, not that I don't like that Danny Jansen's hurt, but I do like that he, for his own story, he's getting a chance this year, whereas last year, like you said, he didn't. So I'm excited to see some big things. And look, this is another thing. Like I said, going from good to great lineup, this is another part of the extension. If we are believing that Dalton is going to be good and Kirk's going to be good, that means one through six. If you have a one through six that can bop and do damage against opposing pitchers in the MLB, that's a great lineup right there. And also, too, there's just another element to all of this. Danny Jansen's in a contract year. Yeah. Right? I mean, like, de depending on how Alejandro Kirk does, like, if Kirk goes crazy this year, that changes the conversation on whether or not you're potentially going to offer Danny the bag. If Kirk does not do a whole lot this year, mm. that also changes the conversation. So there's big implications, not only on Alejandro mm. Kirk and his future with the team, but also Danny Jansen, too. I hear you. All right, moving on to the bottom three part of the lineup. And this is where you might see a little bit of tip, but you might see a little bit of sneaky pop, too. Kevin Kiermeyer, speaking of sneaky pop, he's got three homers this spring training. He got two of them in a, in a game recently. Yeah. Um, overall slash on this spring has been kind of low, but he said he wanted to hit for a little bit more power. Maybe he's trying a few more things against some live pitching. But what I've noticed, John Schneider throwing him up in the seventh spot as opposed to the ninth spot. I'm the kind of opinion where, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it necessarily. But maybe they do really believe that there is something there where he can actually drive in a bit more runs for this team and give him some sp uh, more, more production out of the seven spot. What do you think? Yeah, I like it, dude. I mean, uh, Kevin Kiermaier, I was looking back at his numbers last year. And, I mean, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer here. His first half was significantly better than it his It was. Half. It he, was significantly he did fall better. And he, yeah, and here's the thing, though. I think this year... I could see him falling into a platoon role. Like, I don't really see an everyday kind of player out of Kevin Kiermaier come down the stretch. We didn't see that near the end either, right? Because he's kind of a little bit older, gets banged up. He plays aggressive in the outfield. I could see him platooning a bit down the stretch. It, see, for me, I hear where you're coming from there. I think it, it obviously it depends on his workload, his energy levels, and his injury. Because I just think, like, defensively speaking, like, mm. it's so difficult to keep that guy out of the lineup when yeah. you know what he's going to provide. Yeah. Like, having him, for sure. Varsho, and Springer, it's like... Anything that's popped in the air, you're gone. Yeah. That's a yeah. guarantee with those guys. So I, I do hear you. Um, I'm hoping that uh, that he pops off in the first half like he did last year. But uh, yeah. that's going to be a wait and see type thing. And I think that's where John Schneider coming into year two with Kevin Kiermaier might have to manage him a little bit better. I mean, he kind of he admitted he mismanaged George Springer a bit and making him play almost 700 plate appearances last that's year. That's a lot. That's a lot for a guy his age. And I mean, Kevin Kiermaier and him around the same age. So there will be a little bit of managing. I am curious to see 
how they uh, will give him some off days earlier, maybe. Like, maybe if they want to keep him healthy through the entire season so he doesn't have that fall off near the end, right? Mm. Maybe you have some days where Kevin Kiermaier's maybe only, maybe only playing five out of seven days or four out of six days a week, and you have people like David Schneider coming in or IKF filling into those outfield corner spots. Completely agree. Before we get to the next guy, folks, if you are watching right now, if you haven't already done so, please hit that like button, smash that subscribe button. We are 10 days away. From Toronto Blue mm. Jays, regular season Let's baseball. Go. And in 10 days, we are going to be live on this channel watching the first game opening day against the Tampa Bay Rays. We're going to be doing all of those games that weekend, folks. So if you guys are looking for a place to consume some Toronto Blue Jays content and just bring in the 2024 season, this is where it is, folks. This is where it is. I agree. We got some people in the chat. Shout out to everybody in our YouTube chat right now. I got Last Duel Gaming, Mike F, Lyndon, Sophie, Tom Dinder. Shout out to all of you guys, and, and we appreciate all of your comments, and we love hearing what you think about the Toronto Blue Jays. Let us know. Completely agree, folks. Let's move on to that eight hitter for the Toronto Blue Jays 2024. We got... I don't know who we got. Is it Captain Gio? <laughs> it's oh, Mr. I IKF. Okay, there he is. There he is. Yeah. That's our big, favorite, dude. that's my favorite, man. Hey, look, uh, I've said it a thousand times, but if you're just coming back and you know that I don't like IKF, I don't like the signing. I'm going to say that again. Look, he's got to put up. He's having a good spring. So if we're saying all these guys have a good spring, IKF's having a good spring. Got to give, gotta give him some credit, right, coming out of the gate. Maybe coming over to Toronto is helping him out. Maybe getting some more regular playing time will help him out. He didn't have that necessarily with the New York Yankees as he was more of an off-the-bench kind of spot start, late-inning kind of sub guy. Maybe this will help him out. He's never really done it in his career. He's never hit over 700 OPS Jesus. in his entire career. So I'm not really banking on it. But you're in the eighth spot. That whole third base situation, I think, isn't going to stay like this the entire season. That's why I'm not so worried about it. There could be a situation where, hey, look, IKF, you got the regular playing time, but it's just not working or maybe there's an injury. I don't know. I could see this them going out in the trade deadline. If we're really popping off, and IKF's just that one guy that's really not doing it for us. Maybe you put him to the bench roll and you go trade for somebody in the third base bank. I don't know if that would be a reality, but things might open up down the stretch. It's one of those things where it's okay for now, as long as the other guys do the job. Dude, the Isaiah Kiner Falefa roller coaster has been <laughs> hilarious because just recently, for whatever reason, people have hopped back on the train of like, this is a terrible contract, and <laughs> Ross Atkins is, you know, under fire for for doing this. And it feels like we've kind of like been through that narrative yeah. like five or six times at this point. Yeah. And I do think it's it's one of those things that's just going to continue to happen because I don't think he, no one can explain it. Yeah. Unless this guy goes crazy this year, no one will be able to explain that contract. Dude, we were watching Talking Baseball. Shout out to those guys over there at John Boy Media. They were talking about the Blue Jays and all the problems that uh, the Toronto Blue Jays that they had concerns of all went back to the third base bank. Because, yeah. because they were like, okay, well, their pitching is good, but they really needed to get some more defense help in that infield. Matt Chapman's gone. Okay, well, their lineup's good, but they really needed some boppers in the corners because their outfield doesn't just bop as much anymore. Chapman's gone. And it's like, well, who's there? It's IKF. Yes. And when you have them locked in for two years, that's where the problem is. However, I'm just hoping that we let this season play out. I'm expecting IKF to be exactly what IKF is, which is a high 600 OPS guy, and give you some solid defense. But he is more of a bench role, and I'm hoping that he goes and migrates towards a bench role. People mm -hmm. are saying maybe Ernie Clement starts. Maybe. I don't know. That's possible. Possible. But maybe you go look for some outside talent, or if some of, so, someone in your system, like a Damiano Palmagiani, popping off, that could be a replacement. I just think it's not going to be uh, a cemented the entire season. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree, dude. I agree. Moving on to the nine-hitter in this lineup, folks. Uh this is Biggio, right? This is Kevin Biggio. This is Kevin. There he is. He's batting ninth right now, guys. Kevin Biggio, he's looking for a big year. Unlike Kevin Kiermaier, uh, t tale of two seasons with Kevin Biggio as well. Yeah. But his second half was much better than his first half. And his second half was exactly what you want from Kevin Biggio. He was getting on base a bunch. Mm -hmm. That OPS, I think it was like 765. Yeah. Very solid. And if you can produce like that in the nine hole in the lineup, we are laughing. Yeah, I mean, the, another good thing was uh, that on base was close to 400. Yes. Near the second half, yes. the second half last year. And um, yeah, speaking of the nine spots, uh, you got uh, Morgan saying, put KK in the nine spot. We're going based off what we're seeing in spring training. Just mm. want to remind everybody, I said that a little bit earlier. They've been putting Kevin Bishop in the ninth spot. I think to that point of the on-base percentage, well, that's your second leadoff hitter right there, effectively. If you if Kevin Kiermaier is going to be your guy to drive in runs, 
which maybe he, and maybe he does more power. I, we're just taking his word for it. Mm -hmm. Let's try him up in the seventh spot. Kevin Bisho just gets on base, flips the lineup over. That makes sense. If you have a guy who has almost a 400 on base percentage, I'm not saying he's going to do that in the full season, but if he gets off to some sort of bat start to begin the year, yeah. that's a great way to flip the lineup. Well, and we've been talking a lot on this channel, me specifically, about speed and getting some more stolen bags in here. Mm. Kevin Biggio used to be a guy who could, who could snag 10 to 15 bags. With yep. these new rules... Yep. He could be a dude who could potentially push for 20. And if he's 20, down right. there in that nine hole, he gets himself on base somehow. Right. Steal a bag. George Springer, Boba Shets up. I'm all about it. MVP Biggio. Dude, I love Marina. I love the way spring training changes all of our uh, outlook on the season. 100%. She, she, Marina says, I kind of love this lineup. If you were to tell me that a month ago, I'd be yeah. like, you're crazy. What do you love about this lineup? But if we're all assuming that these guys are actually going to bop, it's okay to have IKF in the eighth spot. Sure. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? We just need the dudes who are supposed to do well to actually <laughs> to do, do well, well yeah. guys. Yeah, everybody says spring training stats don't matter, but they kind of do. They kind of do. Because you start to think differently yes. about the squad. You start to think yes. of it differently. That is the starting lineup that we're projecting for the opening day Toronto Blue Jays. 2024, 10 days away. Ooh. Let's look at the bench now. Now the bench, this is definitely mm. a lot more contentious. There's mm. a lot of open spots. And this is where we got to bring up everybody. Danny Jansen yeah. could be on the IL. Could be on yeah. the IL to start this season. So that is a big thing right there. A, a couple other guys too, we're going to talk about them later, but a couple other IL spots here, potentially Kevin Gosman and, and probably Alec Bono as well. So right. just stuff to consider, folks. Yeah. Stuff to consider. Yeah, again, like we, this isn't the A lineup. This is what is actually going to be starting on the full roster on opening day mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, so mm -hmm. with that being said we're actually not starting with Danny Jansen's replacement no. oh a little sneak peek oh. to him oh <laughs> uh, we're actually got number one David Schneider he feels like the most lockiest lock of, of the bench guys 100%. right here um I mean what is there to say you got this guy earned his spot in, in a full in a full uh season from that August last year yeah uh and he still ended up with an OPS over a thousand and eight home runs and on pace for ridiculous numbers if he played a full season David Schneider, he's going to be coming off the bench, maybe even starting. This isn't like a you – know, maybe he starts instead of Kevin Bishop. if you've got uh, lefties in the lineup, right? Mm -hmm. uh, David Schneider could go – he can go play some corner outfield. We were talking, what if Kevin Kiermaier needs a day off? Maybe you put in David Schneider in the outfield. Uh, you need Kevin Bisho a day off. Maybe you got a right in the lineup, put him at second base. Maybe you need someone to come in at third maybe one day. You've got some people banged up over there at IKF. Throw in David Schneider. He's going to be the utility guy for the Blue Jays off the bench. What do you think, just to, I mean, just you, Adam Peddle. I mean, mm. it's tough. It's impossible to predict because obviously there's going to be so many different variables here. Yeah. But realistically, the Toronto Blue Jays have a seven seven games in a week, right? It's a, it's a packed week yeah. right now. They don't have a single off day. How many games are we seeing David Schneider in that mm. week? How many games? That's a good question. I mean... Definitely matchups, I think, are going to be a huge part, yeah. uh, especially lefty-righty, because I think you're going to platoon David Schneider and Kevin Biggio. They're going to be kind of doing the similar role. you got your lefty platoon guy, you got your you got your righty platoon guy. Yeah. So depending on the matchups of the week, I mean, I can see them vary from, you, know, you have seven games a week, four, you can see four to six, four to six games. I was going to say, like, at minimum for me, it's probably four, yeah. uh, it, just because, again, like, he's got so much versatility and he can do an outfield thing, he can do an infield thing. Yeah. Hell, I mean, he could be DH if you really wanted him to, yeah. right? Uh, so because of all of that, I think, yeah, you're going to see, like, more games than not, David Schneider will be in here. I'm not predicting, like, an everyday guy here, yeah. but I think he might finish the season with a sneaky, like, 400 at bats, yeah. assuming he is producing. For sure. I think the game totals are going to be very high because I could see, you know, if you start off with a righty, you bring in a lefty to face that like bottom part of the lineup. Well, now you put in David Schneider in that nine spot. Yeah, I can see that happening almost every other game. Completely, if you start completely agree. Moving on, folks, uh, to Danny Jansen's oh, replacement, yeah. <laughs> Brian <laughs> Servin Swervin, folks. Yeah. This is the guy uh, for a little while there in the first week <laughs> of spring training. He was leading the MLB in RBIs in spring training. Uh, just goes to show the stats really don't mean anything at all. But like, hey, maybe maybe there's a little something here. Maybe there's a little something, something yeah. with Brian Servin Swervin. Yeah, he popped off. He's got some power, three home runs this spring training. And also, shout out to Henry Davis, who's having a great spring training in his own right. Yes. Uh, but the we're kind of predicting here, we got to make a choice. We can't just be like, we don't know. Mm -hmm. if Brian Servant feels like the choice just to replace Danny Jansen for at least the first week or two. 
Danny Jansen's supposed to ramp up baseball activity in about a couple weeks, so that goes right into the opening day in the first week, first couple weeks. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to have Danny Jansen go on the IL. Maybe he gets a little, a couple starts in AAA. Then he gets called up for the big league camp. But yeah, as soon as he, as soon as Danny's back, sorry, Brian, we love you, dude, but you'll be back down. In the yeah, he, he's doing that role, and we've seen this in the past. Oh, God, who, what was a, I, I'm totally blanking right now. What was our backup catcher's name previously? Who came up that one that one weekend and just went crazy for like a week? Oh, I know what you're talking about. I'm so blanking right about. now. Somebody please let me. I should know. I, this. I got the I pressure should. on my head right now. I'm trying yeah. to really find it. I should. It. I should know this. I don't know why I can't remember. Uh, you That's guys a are typical gonna... three catcher for the Blue Jays. Yeah. We we forget. But oh, it's. Uh, oh, no, I lost it. It's the thing. It's possible, though. I mean, Heineman. Heine. Heine. That's of my guy. Of course. I, I, of course, Heine. My brain went something to do with butts. Yeah. Something yeah. private parts. <laughs> yeah, for real though. But but literally, like Heineman had a, a, a little bit of a stretch there where like he was kind of good at baseball. And Zach Collins too. And Zach, Zach Collins. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Zach Collins. Right. We've seen this happen before. Right. Sometimes having a different look in, in the lineup here, where it's like just no, there's not a real book yeah. out on these guys. That can be a little helpful. So, yeah, Swerving, I, I don't expect him to do a whole lot with the team. And when Danny's back, he will be gone. But I, I do think yeah. he'll start with the team on uh, on March March 28th. He might get two out of seven games to start. Maybe maybe three out of seven. You know, it depends on how Kirk's feeling coming in. If he's getting a little banged up, maybe gets a little bit more starts. But two out of seven, and you're okay with sitting this guy on the bench. Agreed. Agreed. Third bench guy for these Toronto Blue Jays. This is a very exciting one, yes. folks. And I think at this point... It's pretty safe to lock it in. It's Ernie Clement. There was a little bit of a debate whether or not this guy was going to be or not going to be on the opening day roster. He's been playing out of his skin through mm -hmm. spring training so far. And if the Toronto Blue Jays do not want to lose him, they need to have him on the team. Uh, so yeah. uh, obviously at this point, you're not going to cut him. He's just doing too well to do that. Yeah. you got to have this guy come March 28th. Yeah, and what that means is you're you're not going to see, spoiler alert, Santiago Espinal is not going to be on a predicted opening day roster. And it's, it's, it's a tough pill to swallow, I think, if you're just a, an OG Blue Jay fan because you've seen this guy with the team year in and year out. This is kind of the first year where, you know, he didn't have impressive numbers last year. It felt like he was really low on the totem pole and, uh, you know, a really good Ernie Clement with zero options. I think that's the key right there. If Ernie Clement had options, I think you could make some arguments. Maybe you keep up uh, Santiago. Right. But I think Ernie, a man, I mean, he deserves a job. Having no options, you don't want to get rid of him. You got to send a Santiago down and say, hey, if you want to, if you eventually, if Ernie gets hurt or you want to cut him for whatever reason, if he's not performing, well, now you can bring up Santiago again. He's got options. So I think the, I think the writing's on the wall here. Look, Ernie Clement does not have an easy road by any stretch of the imagination. Let's be very clear on that. This is just the beginning. He just made it through level one <laughs> to make it to the opening day roster. If he does not put up in the month of April, he is gone. If he doesn't put up in the month of May, he is gone, right? It is going to be a consistent thing. He's going to be fighting for every single additional at-bat. He has got to come out of the gate looking good because they do have Santiago Espinal waiting in the wings. Mm. And let's face it, that guy does deserve some major league at-bats at some point in the season. He mm. does. That, it, that's just the way it is. So, Ernie Clement, you earned your spot right now. I am over the moon, extremely hype about what you have to offer. Let's see it. Let's yeah. see it in the MLB regular season. I think I think the Blue Jays fan base would riot if it, if Ernie got caught. That'd be ridiculous. No. They would riot. That's just I don't know. That, like, that's what that's why that's what like kind of sums it up for me. It's like okay, we obviously <laughs> have to this? at this point. Yeah, yeah like yeah. Th this is a foregone conclusion. So Ernie, we're cheering for you, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Uh, now the last bench spot. I mean, some of you have already said it in the chat. It's kind of up for debate right now. It's kind of our first baseman backup job. Mm -hmm. You had Joey Votto come out this uh, Sunday, hit a homer in the very first pitch you saw. Granted, I mean, it's a middle-middle fastball. You, you do damage on those. Mm -hmm. And he did it he at did. 40 years old, yep. right? And then you had Vogelbach, who's been popping off this spring. He had the bat flip and the trot against Garrett Cole. Uh, but you had Joey Votto roll his ankle, so there's a little debate there. So right now, Nick and I did this, and we're going to discuss it right here. We have right now a votto vocal block split. Well, let's talk about the pros and cons mm -hmm. of each, and then kind of decide as a unit here, as everyone in the chat, as us two here, who gets that final bench spot. Let's well, start with Joey Votto. Yeah, I'll tell you right now, man. This would be Votto for sure for me had you not had that tiny little rolling of an ankle update. And, and apparently this is a small thing. Yeah. Like, apparently he's going to be playing again relatively soon. But let's also not forget, the guy's 40, right? It's like he is an older dude. And sometimes, you know, like, you, you aggravate something. And I imagine as well, even, even if it is a, a semi or, or, like, even if he's still feeling it, he's going to be playing through it 
because he wants to make the opening day roster. So he might not even be letting on necessarily like how bad or not bad it is. Mm -hmm. That injury for me is the only reason why he is not locked in at this point. Yeah. Because I do think that if he was 100% fully healthy, it's Votto all day. Right. And I could see another thing where Votto's been very open about him being totally comfortable going down to AAA Buffalo. Like he's, he's been very humble about it. That's I, true. I will go down to AAA That's Buffalo. True. I have no problem with that. But there is just a certain level of respect and, and, and clubhouse presence that you'd be missing out by not having Joey Votto. Mm -hmm. no, no disrespect to Daniel Vogelbach, but I think having a future Hall of Famer is going to be much bigger impact in that clubhouse. So, yeah, I think he's going to be fine because they, they did really downplay it a lot. It they seems did. fine. Even Joey was laughing about it, how he rolled his ankle on a bat. So I think if he's okay, if you see him back in the lineup come tomorrow or Wednesday, we're going back to Votto and, and, and instead of Vogelbach. And let me tell you guys, this is a blow to the Jays in a regard because we just lost out. I love Joey Votto. I'm so excited for Joey mm -hmm. Votto. But we also just lost out on the biggest memeable player yeah. in maybe the entire MLB, Danny Burgers. I wanted to see Danny Burgers on the squad. I really did. If there was a fifth spot right now, right. I'd be over the moon because it's like, yes, we get to watch Danny Burgers do damage. This is a hilarious right. thing to just see. Sadly, Joey Votto, as you said, Hall of Famer, mm -hmm. Canadian boy. We have to, we we gotta make it happen right now. This is we're rallying behind him. But I will, I'll tell you right now, I'm not gonna be upset if Danny Burgers but finds his way on the opening day roster because I like calling him Danny Burgers and I like watching that guy. I won't be necessarily uh, shocked or I won't be disappointed. I'll just no, you know what? I'm gonna change that around. I will be kind of disappointed because I am, I am thinking I want to see me some Joey Votto in a Blue Jay uniform. Come opening day, see him in little games here and there, see him like at the Rogers Center. I, I would be a little bit. I know it's all funny with like Danny Burgess, and I think he can still put up a good, like low, like average, he can put up an average bat. You know, like Danny Burgers can, but could. there is just something different about Joey Votto, bro, for obvious reasons. Yeah, yeah, dude, on, honestly, like, there's strong arguments for both of those guys. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're saying Votto. That could change very soon, though. So that is the position side of things, guys. All the hitters, mm -hmm. that's what we're looking at. Before we get to the pitchers, though, let's give a quick shout-out to one of the sponsors of this video. Time for a quick shout out to Betway. Betway is the best place to make all of your sports bets on all of your favorite teams. Betway is also in collaboration with iGaming Ontario. Must be 19 years older to participate. And guys, please bet responsibly. Now, back to the content. Shout out to Betway, everybody, for being absolutely phenomenal. I think the Toronto Blue Jays line, correct me if I'm wrong, mm. I think it's 86 and a half or 87 and a half. Either way, mm -hmm. if we're coming out and, and everybody has an OPS over one, I would take the over, guys. Oh, I would yeah. take the over. Oh, my God. I would smash the over. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 86 and a half is way too low for us. Uh, yeah. Also, I want to give a quick a couple uh, honorable mentions. A lot of people saying, like, where's Nathan Lucas? Um, hey, listen. Love what Nathan Lucas has done this spring. I love what he did last year. I yeah. was rooting for him. But, I mean, this is the great problem we have. Nathan Lucas on maybe 15 other MLB teams to be on the bench coming, coming out and playing outfield. We got a great, we got a great lineup. We got a great bench, and there's not a spot for him. He's a luxury at this point, yeah. and uh, unfortunate for him, he's gonna have to wait a little bit. I think you're picking one between Lucas or Ernie Clement. You know, like I, I feel right. like it's like you, you got all these other guys who are, you know, well, I guess swerving not so much, uh, but right. you know, kind of proven at the MLB level, right? Like David Schneider proved that he's capable of stuff last year. You got your first base back up there in Votto and Vogelbach, who it's like those guys, they played at the MLB level for a long period of time. You got your catching back up. I feel like then it then it's between, okay, what do you want? Do you, do you want this other exciting dude or th this other you yeah. know, exciting dude, right? It's like you're kind of dealing with two different dudes there, and I think you're just going Clement based on the options. And I'll, and I'll be honest, too. Like, you don't really need another outfielder. And a lot of people have been like, where's our fourth outfielder? Well, it's David Schneider, and it's IKF, and it's uh, Kevin Biggio. Correct. Right? You, those guys can all give you outfield and rotate out of the infield. So you really do. Having one guy just be an outfielder kind of handcuffs you a little bit, right? Even with Santiago Espinal, I mean, he just played infield. And you have all these other guys that are doing much better with the bat that yeah. want to be in the lineup. So you're handcuffed a little bit. Ernie's there because he's just, like, breaking out. Being he's crazy. going crazy. Yeah. He's, that's it. <laughs> that's not to say, though, that we're not going to see Nathan Lucas yeah. at some point in this season. Because I, I would yeah. bet on it, honestly. Me too. Let's move over to that rotation, folks. So, kicking things off. Mm. Now, typically, you would have Kevin Gosman up here. We're not, mm. I'm going to let you go right now. We are not including Kevin Gosman at all on this. We are assuming that he's going to be hurt, that he's going to be on the IL. Yeah. I hope that that's not necessarily the case. I hope that he's ready to go for the opening day roster and he can be here. Either way, though, 
we can say for sure he's not going to start on opening day. Yeah. Similarly, Alec Manoa, he's not going to be on here either, guys. He's going to start in the IL. That's what we're assuming is going to happen. With that being said, let's kick it off with our first dude. Yeah, first dude is Jose Barrios, guys. We talked about him recently, how he's going to get another chance to start opening day. Um, he deserves it. He, I think he uh, he's proven it, especially in this camp. I mean, you can make an argument Chris Bassett's done really well this camp. Yeah. But I, I do think the guy who's been here the longest, the veteran guy on the Blue Jays, who signed him to a big deal, he's going to get the opening day start. And, yeah, to, to quickly pivot and comment about, like, Kevin Gosman, like, it is very unfortunate, but I think they're going to build him up a little bit right now mm -hmm. uh, to have a little bit more time, and they're going to use that extra IR spot to bring up some other guys you'll see later in this video and, and this podcast. To, to provide some depth for the Blue Jays in the bullpen and rotation. But point being on Jose Burrios, yeah, what else can we say? I think he deserves another chance. Back in 2022, he got blown up on his first start, and that was kind of the beginning of a really rocky season for yeah, him. Yeah. And now's a chance to rewrite history, baby. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you, and I do think that Burrios is going to be in for a big year, and I am mm. confident with him being the opening day starter. I do want to make a quick mention to what Sophie just said in the mm -hmm. chat, saying that she heard that Kevin or Kevin Barker mm -hmm. from uh, Blair and Barker say that he could start – in Houston, mm -hmm. Gosman. Now, Houston is the second series mm -hmm. for the Toronto Blue Jays. you got four games against Tampa Bay. Then it's Houston. So if that was to happen, no IL. Yeah. But again, right now, it is a could. We're still not sure. Yeah. We're assuming that he's going to be on the IL. If anything else changes, though, that's a good thing. Yeah, that's I, a mean, good thing. I mean, that'd be great. The one thing it would, it, it's only like one series you'd have to really survive in, in the trop. But you would be taking up a roster spot. And then if he's not ready to go, then you might have a little bit more concern because... Like, what if you do have to get a little bit more innings out of, like, a Bowden Francis start or a Yusei Kikuchi start? Mm, then mm. you have a guy taking up one of those spots. Uh, you, you don't have that long guy in the bullpen really to come help you. So that, it's just one series, and that's not detrimental to your team, but mm -hmm. something to consider yeah. going to opening day. Moving on to our second guy here. Again, we brought him up. He could start on opening day if you so wanted to. Uh, but either way, we have him penciled in for the second start, Chris Bassett. Not a whole lot to say here. I mean, he's having a great spring so far. He's just mm -hmm. as consistent as consistent can be. I feel like he's just one of those guys that you lock into the rotation, and he is a set it and forget it. You know what you're going to get, and it's going to be quality. Yeah, he was actually talking on a, a podcast. I think it was on the Chris Rose podcast. And mm -hmm. he was saying uh, that... Uh, he, he believes that, like, pitchers shouldn't be, this is kind of off topic, kind of not, he, pitchers shouldn't be throwing, like, 97, 98 because they're going to get hurt and they're not really pitching. Chris right. Bassett is a pitcher, throws 91, 90, stays healthy, and I think that's a big part of his game. I don't want to jinx or anything, but he can last you a full 162 sure. over the season because he's not wearing out his arm. He's throwing 68 on some curveballs. Yeah. Like, Chris Bassett is a pitcher, pitcher's pitcher. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, I love the guy. What, what can I say about him, guys? Yeah, he's phenomenal, guys. I'm so happy. I, what a great and underrated sign. Oh, amazing. What a great right? and underrated. We, we rarely talk about that. Phenomenal job by the Toronto Blue Jays yeah. front office on Chris Bass. Yeah, we got him for this year and got him for next year. Yeah. Just great. Loving it. Number three, dude. This guy's in a contract year. Yeah. How about you say Kikuchi, everybody? Terrible, terrible first year with the Toronto Blue Jays. Pretty solid bounce back. He's slotting in third in the rotation. Now, in a perfect world, he would not be this high. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he'd be knocked down to that four spot. But because of Kevin Gosman, he's locking in at three. You say Kikuchi. I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hoping right now. I'm not going to say that I'm fully bought in that this is going to be a, another great season that we're going to build off of it. But I'm hopeful. Hey, I mean, he he said he would, he thinks he's going to get better. I mean, everyone's going to say they're going to they're going to get better. <laughs> you imagine if he came out and said, "Ah, I'm going to get better." Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> terrible yeah, offseason. Yeah. I'm going to be yeah. terrible. Yeah. But that's the thing is, he he stayed in Florida and he he worked on his craft even more. Yeah. He thinks he's going to get better. So I, I do have hopeful um, – I, I am hopeful for Yusei Kikuchi to put up a similar ERA. If he gave me like a, a low 4, like a 4.10, like a, I wouldn't be butthurt no, at No, I'll all. take that. But I, I need innings, and he's going to give us that, right? So I'm I'm looking forward to it. He'll be that lefty option in the Toronto Blue Jays mm -hmm. rotation. And then going in at number 4, and this is where the rotation is going to be a little bit different to mm -hmm. start the year. Not what we're used to, but this guy, if he does well enough – and he does so well that when Alec Manoa, when it's his time to return, they're going, maybe we just keep Alec down in AAA. This, that man is bowed in Francis, everybody. Yeah. He's right now slotted in the number four spot in terms of depth in that rotation. I'll tell you right now, there's two guys that uh, Toronto Blue Jays fans have uh, been crushing on mm -hmm. this spring, <laughs> and it's Ernie Clement yeah. and Bowden Francis. Yeah. Right, Bowden Francis is the dude on the pitching side of things that every Toronto Blue Jays fan is like, oh my god, I love you, I want you forever. And that's because 
last year, it's very small sample size. We're talking like 36 innings, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was phenomenal with the Toronto Blue Jays. 1.73 ERA so far this spring. All of the reports are great. Everybody is talking about this dude and how his stuff looks good. And then he's coming out and he's performing, right? This past yeah. week, we were actually looking at him for Jay of the Week. Go six innings, go yeah. scoreless. That's what you want to see. Bowden Francis right now has a very high ceiling with these Toronto Blue Jays. He could make this, make 2024 his year, yeah. and he could even make an argument, like you said, to keep Manoa in the minors, depending on how everything's shaping up. Yeah, it's it's part of the eyeball test, I think, when you see Bowden Francis out there starting for the Toronto Blue Jays. I, I made a video about it, and the argument was like, well, he's been dominating. Even the 36 innings he pitched last year, even in spring training, he's been dominating. So until he doesn't dominate or until the hitters readjust, why take him out of the rotation? Yeah. The big thing for him will be, can he survive a 162? Can he give you over 160 innings pitch if you were to be that guy? We've never seen it in a long time. I think he hasn't pitched over 130 since 2021. So that's going to be the big test for him. So We'll see. Maybe that. Maybe later on in the season, you see his arms start to give out. Then you bring up an Alec Manoa. That would still help you out, I guess, to get you through the whole season. Yeah, but at least to start, yeah. we are very excited. Mm -hmm. Now, this fifth dude, uh, I, I think that you can certainly have debate here. Uh, yeah. Like, there's absolutely debate on, on who this guy could be. And it is difficult when you get to this point, when you're starting the season, you already have two of your you know potential guys in your rotation on the IL. This is always tricky. We're saying it's going to be Mitch White. Um, I do want to make it very clear that by saying that it's Mitch White, that also indicates that it's a bullpen day. You know, That's like right. like I don't expect Mitch White to come out here and throw five or six innings. You know, like I'm yeah. thinking it's going to be primarily a bullpen day, but he would get the start again. I think that you can make debate here, but that's who we're riding with number I, five. I could also see Trevor Richards starting going once through the lineup sure. and then bringing in Mitch White for like two times through the lineup. I could absolutely see that happening. But either way, like he'll be acting as that like starting pitcher of the day. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's not a great great sign, and this would be the immediate we're replacing you in the rotation uh, ro uh, when Kevin Gosman comes back. Yeah. So. You gotta survive, and the reason why he's there too, just to know what uh, you know, make note of his contract. Zero options. So when you have Kevin Gosman come back, most likely he will slot into the bullpen for now mm -hmm. because you still need a little bit of length, and you might as well soak up any value you get. But we know how volatile Mitch White can be mm -hmm. on the Strong Blue Chase team. Last few years has not been good. Yeah. So yeah. I think as soon as you have the luxury, though, you won't be butt hurt if you've got to cut Mitch White two starts into it, two appearances into the season. Yeah, and I mean, the entire chat just re reacted. We, yeah. we got yuck, n what, <laughs> WTF we and all that. Yeah, like, no one's happy about this. And there is also a comment in here saying that Paulo Espino is a mm -hmm. great option instead mm -hmm. of Mitch White. I'll let you know right now that we're going to get to him a little bit later. Spoiler alert. I could also see that as well. Yeah. Honestly, like, Mitch White slotting at five, this is one of the ones that I was, like, the least sure about. But we're going to ride with it until it's, proven otherwise. It's literally just, okay, we have to soak out his value because if we cut him out of spring training, he's gone. Correct. So, like, let's get innings. We're not worried about performance. Well, let's get innings. Yeah. Give us innings until our big boys get back. And as soon as you as soon as soon you underperform, which I think we can all bet, like, I'm, I'm, I am doubting. I am hating on a little bit on Mitch White right now. I think we all are. Mm -hmm. As soon as you do not perform, then you're gone. <laughs> And that's it. That's the last we'll ever see. Hilarious. You know, uh, we, we get the uh, um, updates about people commenting on our videos and yeah. on our phone and stuff because we have the YouTube app. Somebody comments right now, Mitch White needs to be DFA'd. <laughs> just, I don't know well, if they're watching this video right now, but okay. that's just like, funny, timing, funny Here, timing. Here's the thing. <laughs> Over under two and a half weeks uh, into the regular season, so uh, starting on March 28th, right. Uh, Mitch White DFA. Impossible to say because I don't know how Alec Manoa and yeah. Gosman are going to recover. But I'll say this. Whenever there is a moment for where somebody needs to get cut, it's him. That's that's what it is. So whenever everybody else is healthy, he's getting cut. Yeah. That's what it yeah, is. Especially, well, again, spoiler, Espino is going to be on this list. If he's doing great, well, like... Why not? Why get rid of him? Yeah. Why? We are trying to win ball games here. Let's move on to the bullpen, everybody. Kicking things off. I forget who we have at the top here. I, I wonder who it's gonna be. Yeah, yeah. Who? Uh, who is it? Let's draw yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> I wasn't sure like how you uh, yeah. Adam did graphic. Based on eliteness. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. I understand. Yeah. Obviously, Jordan Romano. We can lock this dude in. Markham Kid. Uh, let me just say we didn't talk enough about this last year. Mm -hmm. I love his entrance. Uh, oh, in, God, in God. the Roger oh, Center. God, yeah. That's just so good. I, I hope that they build on it. Like, I hope mm. that they include, like, like they, they, they continue to add and just continue to make it more elite. Because I just think that that's, so, that is one of those things, 
sidebar here. Mm. Baseball needs to get better at marketing itself mm. and just becoming more exciting and fun. That is a great thing See, for that. We we saw it like I'm. You, I could be wrong. I felt like we only saw it once last year, uh, televised. His entrance, we saw it once in the very beginning and never saw it again. I remember it once. Yeah. I and remember I, it once. Nev- but every time he came into a game, never saw it again at the Rogers Center. Well, let's never. let's have something for TV then, too. Yeah. You know, like let's have a, a, a highlight or something. Something, something yeah. for Jordan Romano. I just, I just want to say I love that. Obviously, I yeah. love him as a player, too. He's phenomenal. Down year last year, still had... 36 saves yeah. and a 2.92 ERA. Wow, I just pulled that straight off the dome. I yeah. hope I got those numbers right. I think I did. Uh, but he is just so great. Yeah, the thing about Jordan Romano, a lot of people like to bring it up. I mean, yeah, he's got the hanging slider. When he hangs the slider, he'll get in trouble. But his stuff is just better than most people's stuff. That's what it the is. The stuff for stuff comparison, his stuff's better than your stuff. So even if his yeah. stuff is in middle middle, you can't hit it. Dude, my so favorite that's what I love about my it. favorite stat in all of baseball is like stuff plus. Yeah. It's just his the, stuff is so it's good. It's just like I, I think it's such a funny way of saying stuff. that. It's like, yeah, exactly. Like it's and it's true though. It seriously yeah. is true. Shout out to Scott right here who just Go. subscribed to the channel. Guys, if you haven't already done so, please hit that like, smash that subscribe button. As we said, folks, we are gearing up for what is gonna be an incredible season of Toronto Blue Jays content mm-hmm. in 2020. Four. Moving on, number two, Eric Swanson. Let's go. He's phenomenal, dude. I, I loved the addition of Eric Swanson for a long period of yeah. time. We are still reaping the benefits of this. Not a whole lot to say here other than, like, this is guy's going to be right. setting up for Jordan Romano a whole lot in the season. Yeah, and we've got him for another two years. I mean, you, you got, like, is it two years or three years? Maybe it's a little bit longer. But it might well, been, either way, you know, I'm happy with both of that. We, yeah. we got him for a while, right? Like, he's perfect for our window. Yeah, what can I say? Shout out to Eric Swanson. Looking for another great year for you, man. Totally agree, dude. Moving on. Third guy in the pen that you can absolutely lock in. Tim Meza. 69? What? Yeah. What? 69 overall given by MLB The Show. And a D rating. If you're not familiar with the ratings, it's, it's your potential. Yeah. You D. That's the lowest nah, potential. That, that's, that's some that's D blasphemous. respect right there, guys. Yeah, that's definitely something that needs to be amended. Uh, MLB The Show, we've talked about this before on our live streams. Uh, their rating system is all over the place. I think that they do it for clicks, honestly. Mm-hmm. I think that they yeah. want us to have the conversation. Oh, yeah. uh, but, you know, I, you've just angered me to a point where I have to have the conversation. This yeah, is your, I have to. This is your daily reminder to at uh, MLB The Show and tell them to increase Tim Meza's overall yeah. rating. I'm proposing a, a 77... I'll, I'll even go with C. If you give me a 77 C, right, because he's a little bit older, I'll, I'll take that. I think no that suspect. that's much more reasonable. Yeah. Much more. Either way, though, this guy is a solid player. Don't let the ratings fool mm-hmm. you. Fourth guy out of the pen that we are projecting, Jimmy Garcia. What am I going to get today? That's <laughs> that's what I think about when it comes to Jimmy Garcia. Roll the dice. Yeah. Because sometimes you're going to get snake eyes. Sometimes you're going to get double sixes, though. This guy can pop off some uh, some yeah. things. The ERA looks inflated. It's over four. The whip's a lot better. Um, so, But, yeah, you're right. Jimmy Garcia, he's kind of that middle to setup guy. When he's hot... He'll be he'll be in the eighth inning. He can uh, setting yeah. up guys if the matchups are right. Uh, but if he's not, he'll be coming in the fifth or sixth. If you need it out in the middle of the game, you coming in, he's got to come in and take over in the middle of an inning. He can do it. Yeah, yeah. He felt like last year one of the few guys where because again the bullpen was so solid. Uh, like one of the few guys that you can kind of pinpoint as to he can get blown up. Yeah. Um, but granted, we we saw him the year prior to that be really really good and just kind of lights out. So mm-hmm. it, it's almost like a tale of, of two guys. Like which one are we gonna get in 2024? I love uh, Marina shutting up the Jimmy Garcia category. And if you know, yeah. the point being, he's number four. Yeah. And uh, so that, that feels right. He's right in the middle. <laughs> All right, folks. Number five on this list, you got Chad Green. Uh, I'm excited to see. Yeah. A full season of Chad Green. This is one of those additions that we just really don't know yet, you know, because yeah. we haven't seen enough of him. Chad Green, when he is healthy, has proven that he can be one of the best bullpen guys in the entire MLB. He is really hasn't been healthy with the yeah. Toronto Blue Jays yet. He finally is. A, he is going to be in that pen and has some high upside. Yeah, like, look, if everyone starts to click, we were talking about the lineup all clicking. Like, we know Jordan's going to click. We know Eric's going to click. Tim Mace is going to click. Yeah. Jimmy, he can click. He's, now we're getting into categories where, like, what are we going to see out of you over a full season? Obviously, bullpen's a little bit more volatile mm-hmm. over mm-hmm. a full season. But if you can really give me some consistency, Chad Green, that's adding to that top tier right there. I really do see him 
as a as a great top tier totally back end rotation guy. Give me set up Jordan Romano. He could. He absolutely could. He could. When he's at his best, he one thousand yeah. percent could, guys. So look out for Chad Green. That's going to be an exciting watch in April when, when yeah. we get to see what he's actually yeah. what he's showing up as yeah. in, uh, with the Toronto Blue Jays. Can't agree more. Number six in this bullpen, we've got Henesis Cabrera. Who we got from the St. Louis Cardinals trade last year. Pretty good trade. Honestly, underrated. We've been looking for that second lefty out of the pen to help mm -hmm. Tim Meza because Tim Meza was getting overworked. And you saw what happened. As soon as we stopped overworking Tim Meza, he overall had a great season last yep. year. Right? And Henesis Cabrera, he can have some streakiness too to him. He can be good. Kind of fell off a little bit near the end. When he first came over, he was very good. But, uh, hey, look, you're going to be that middle reliever lefty for us, which Meza had to do at some points mm -hmm. when it when it came to being matchups, right? But Henesis can be that middle reliever, come in, pitch two-thirds, and then you're out of the game. Come yeah, on. yeah, and you need to have those guys. So I'm happy that we got him. It does feel like this guy, like, and again, it feels like he could have some upside as well. You know, mm -hmm. you never know what he can provide. I love love that our bullpen, <laughs> yes, there is floors to them, but it does feel like everybody, like, they could seriously pop off. Yeah. yeah. Someone's saying in the chat, man, we're going to miss Hicks. I mean, the pen's still good, even without Hicks. I mean, Hicks is obviously very good, would bolster the bullpen, but Hicks wants to be a starter. So he wouldn't even be in this category anymore, right, yeah. if we brought him back. So uh, I still think we still got a very deep, one of the best bullpens in baseball. Yeah. Seventh dude out of the pen. We got... Trevor Richards, <laughs> yeah, this is your guy. <laughs> um, I mean, not a whole lot to say about Trevor Richards. He's similar. Like, we've obviously seen him just be terrible. Uh, mm -hmm. But there's times where that changeup, dude, mm -hmm. is, like, the best pitch I've seen in baseball ever, you know? Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. he can pop off. And, uh, and I think that he's a really situational guy. And, and I like that he has something that's just better than everybody else. Yeah, and Trevor Richards also provides you a bit of length in the bullpen. We sure. stretched him out a little bit last year. Like we said, in those Mitch, in that Mitch White start, if we end up going with Mitch White on game five, you might see Trevor Richards get the first time through the lineup as an opener, then Mitch White the next two. Uh, Trevor Richards can give you two innings in the middle of a game. Yeah. And just like uh, Jimmy Garcia, just like Genesis Cabrera, all of, like Trevor Richards too, win hot. We've seen him in the eighth inning, the seventh inning, yeah. setting up Jordan Armada. Like, all these guys have the potential to be a back-end guy. And, and it's up to John Schneider on how he wants to manage that. But that's why this pen can be so lethal. Because they all can be good at any point in the season. Totally agree, man. And, uh, yeah, I, I, Trevor Richards, um, I'm just excited to watch him in 2024. See what type of player he brings. Because, yeah. again, like the, the ceilings are, are incredible. The, the floor is low. Yeah, the floor is really low. <laughs> yeah. Moving on to the last spot in this bullpen, and this is a tricky one, folks. We've got a couple options here, so debate as you will in the comments. Debate in the chat. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Paulo Espino is a yep. strong shout. Yes. There's yes. also Nate Pearson. Yeah. And this is one of those things where uh, with Gosman out and with, uh, with Alec Manoa out, mm -hmm. you got to have somebody come up. Is it going to be Big Nate? Is it going to be Espino? Yeah. Thoughts? Yeah, so I think to start out, when you look at this bullpen, uh, start out this uh, opening day roster, yeah, you can get a little bit of length out of Richards. However, if he's going to be spot starting, you might want Espino just in case things get blown up. What if Francis gets blown up? What if Kikuchi gets blown up? Mm -hmm. Who are you going to go to in the pen for three, four, five innings, right? It's Paul Espino right now. He does have a minor league option, so it does make sense to, if you want to, Start him with the team to send him down. Use one of the options. You still got control over him. So that makes sense in its own right. Uh, and then as of Nate Pearson, he also has one option left. However, there's a little bit more risk involved. And I know you've been very passionate about Nate Pearson kind of and where his future lies with the Blue Jays. And this might be it for him. Yeah, seriously, dude. I mean, Nate Pearson had the highest ceiling, you know, out of anybody and then just never was capable of hitting that. And and I do think that you're going to start to see him spend a lot more time in the minor leagues. Uh, Espino is interesting to me because he is that veteran dude and, and being, you know, with all these injuries and stuff, a lot of people are saying, well, he could potentially start in a fifth game and be, we'd right. be okay with that. And, and I mean, you're not really expecting a whole lot out of him. So if he does suck whatever you're gone yeah. you know like that's that's what it is right so that's where we're at with those two guys uh i see some people yeah. in chat talking about one ricky teedman i'll tell you yeah. right now ricky teedman not, not going to be chance. starting with the team yeah. just not going to happen folks more of a developmental thing than anything i mean the stuff is obviously incredible right. i'm going to talk about stuff 
talk about Ricky yeah. Tiedemann. But we're going to have to wait and see on that one. And then the other guy is Yariel Rodriguez. And that is an interesting shout because it's possible, but I do think that they're going to be starting him in the minors yeah. and giving him some time there to, to kind of get ready, to build up before bringing him yeah. to the MLB. The word from camp is he will not be starting with the Blue Jays come opening day. They're still building him up. They're still checking him out. He had his little side session the other day, threw about 60 pitches, but didn't look super comfortable. He hasn't pitched in a year, guys. We can't bring him into MLB action right away. And we have these other guys we brought on for a reason to just survive mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah. I mean, perfect situation. You would have uh, you'd have uh, Alec Manoa, you have Kevin Gosman in the rotation, you have Bowden Francis in the pen, giving you that, long, that length that Yoyo Rodriguez would provide. Uh, he will come up maybe at some point in this season. He's going to start in AAA, maybe even start in Florida Complex League just to build up his stuff mm -hmm. and then go pitch some major league innings. So I know you're all excited, but that's kind of the reality and we can't really fight against yeah, it. Yeah, I will say, because you said maybe, I'm sure he's going to come up this year. I'm pers yeah. I'm saying I'm I know sure. you're right. Yeah. I'm sure it's going to happen, but I think it is one of those situations where, yeah, he didn't pitch at all last year. And then also, too, this guy's never pitched in the MLB ever, right? Like, yeah. you really want to bring him in when he's not fully ready. You have him on a very long contract, yeah. right? And, and then have him just get completely shelled and all of his confidence is stripped away. That's not something that you want. Yeah, and they actually built into his contract to have options, all right? So he can actually be sent down and brought back up. I don't know the exact number. Maybe one or two times. I'll have to double check that fact. Yeah. But yeah, they did build it into his contract because of this exact reason. For the first year, we're going to be building you. You might get up, you might get shelled. We might want to bring you back down, work mm -hmm. on some things. So I think there's going to be a little bit of adjustment period. I hope he does come and put his press I'll, I'll be honest. I'm really excited about Yariel Rodriguez because it's kind of, it's almost a proven commodity that feels like a prospect. And, yeah, it, and like yeah, it feels like yeah. this is one of your top prospects right now. He's not in the system, obviously, nothing like that. But it, it kind of feels like this is a little little tiny version of Ricky Tiedemann in, right. in his own a right. Older, yeah. You know, yeah, like <laughs> older, obviously. But like he's proven that he is capable of like really doing some good stuff. So yeah. it's going to be a while. Uh, but but Time for a quick shout out to Betway. Betway point. is the oh, best. Shout out to Betway coming shout out. Shout out to Betway <laughs> once again, folks. You guys let us know when you are betting to see Yariel Rodriguez. But folks, that is our full opening day Toronto Blue Jays roster projection, guys. Uh, Clearly, there was some contentious stuff there at the end of the bullpen and then also at the end of the bench. So you guys let yeah. us know where we went wrong here, if you agree with us, if you disagree with us. And then also, mark it in your calendars. March 28th, Blue Jays today, live stream in the game, going to be popping off, going to be legendary. You're going to want to be here. Yeah, we're literally streaming every single Tampa Bay Ray game. We're going Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So y'all want to be here. We're going to have our Blue Jays Today show. We're going to start some regular stuff during the week. It's going to be a lot of fun, guys. We're going to have a lot of Blue Jays Today shows, kind of like this length, an hour, hour and a half on your Mondays and Fridays. So make sure to hit that like button, support the show, and subscribe so you don't miss any new updates. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And as always, Go Jays Go! Jays, go!